Hi, I'm Gavin, and today I'm going to be answering a couple oh. of questions in my presentation. So I'm going to be answering, what have I learned? How was I successful? What challenged me? Where do I need to improve? And also, where have I gone? So, first thing I'm going to talk about is how I built social-emotional awareness and empathy in an increasingly interconnected world. So, the one that I used to explain this is the Pencil Box Project. The thing about the Pencil Box Project is, um, with, with my group, we chose uh, Ms. Von Collis, but the only thing is, at the time, she was all the way over in California, and we were in Hawaii. So, you had to, you had to email her, text her, we tried FaceTime a couple of times, and we still had to get exactly what she needed. We still needed to find out. We had to get, we needed to deeply connect with her to find out what she really wanted inside a pencil box. What truly she wanted. And it worked. We were able to find out exactly what she wanted. Just look at that smile. <laughs> you know, that reminds me of um, when I went crossing the Molokai Channel. You know, I've been sailing for two hours. I'm starting to get a little bit bored. Um, but then, pilot whales swam up next to me. And that just gave, they just connected and just gave me the persistence I needed to go through with the four hour, 30 minute long journey. It was a big, it was a big ordeal to do. And just having something there, something connecting that knew exactly the needs that I needed, that was exactly what I needed at that point. Next I'm gonna be talking about how I showed examples of nurturing, sustaining, and stewarding the environment and community in where we live. So. The project was the fishing lure project, and what we did is first we went over to be a fish pond, and we helped move the rocks to help to help build up a Pea fish pond, which is a major cultural staple for Hawaii. Oahu used to have hundreds of fish ponds all over the place, but now there's only a few left, and it's really important to keep the history and culture that is inside this fish pond. But just culture and that, that's not the only thing that's in the fish pond. There's also predators. So what we had to do is we had to make, we just had to make fishing lures in order to get rid of the pesky predators that would have destroyed the ecosystem. Just, just destroyed the chances of mullets and other others uh, that were living there, the other animals that were living there. And that brings me to my, and that reminds me of just when I was crossing the Molokai Channel, there's like, there's this one strip that had like five plastic bottles and a whole bunch of small little plastics. So even though, even though I was crossing it, even though my boat had a little leak in it, and every time that I spent in the channel, I risked my boat sinking. I still just took a little bit of a risk, just picked up those bottles and brought them on board, and just continued anyways, just because that little amount of time, even though that was a little bit more chance of risk, it also helped, it just helped steer the environment, and it just made it all, and I'm very picky about water, and I just was like, yeah, just a few seconds is worth my time to help that. And now, embrace appropriate risks and opportunities to help solve novel problems. For this one, I have the Zoo Banner Project. So the Zoo Banner Project, um, we just, we, this is our final project, but this is what we had before. I think this one looks better, but besides that, <laughs> It's like, there's a little bit of errors and stuff, but I, 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 I liked how this one was. I, I thought it was good how it was showing now. But we had an opportunity. We had an opportunity to make it so it blended with a bunch more. 
posters so that it was we are getting more points across to a, possibly a bigger group of people. So we switched up and we made we made it so it blended in with all of them. And it was it was a risk. I mean, we had to completely redo our background and all that and change a whole bunch of things. And we risked not being able to turn it in on time. We like barely got it in yesterday. So just that, we just had to take the risk, but it was something that we had to do. It was just something that was required, just because with that, we have the chance at not only just, not only just attracting some people and giving them information about just this one thing, we also made it so that they would follow the road. They would look more. They would see, oh, there's more than just this one problem. There's many problems. And there's lots of stuff we can do. So maybe if we can just do one, that can help a lot. And it's just important. And then, and yeah, risk is just something you always need to take. And it's just important in order to take them. Because without risk, you just stay stagnated, and that's just how things go. And then my next one is uh, maintain a positive mindset and believe in the value of persistence in learning. So for this one, I have the I have the um, North Carolina reading reflection essay, and the thing is, I had done, I did it, I turned it in, um, but the only thing is. I didn't really have all the stuff that was needed. And it ended up, it just made it so I didn't get the grade I wanted. It sort of made me want to give up and cry. So live and let die. My grades were going well. It really took a fun to get that good. And Cat said something. I'll get the best of it, but anyway. Yeah, there's errors all over the place, but I was persistent. I got to work. I spent the weekend just really working hard on it, and I came up with something better. And I was able to raise my grade, and that, that was just good. Even though it took a lot of time just to really dig through and just get to what I wanted, it, it worked. And, it shows that I showed persistence in learning at that point. And then, also, one more thing. There's, I have to communicate effective using multiple mediums, spoken, written, artistic, digital, all that stuff. And for that one, I, um, that's just like when the end of, uh, once I had already done the crossing, I made it across, it was good. But I didn't just want to stop there. I'd done it in the big, but there's faster, better boats, like the Laser, the 29er, I really wanted to do it with them, and I still do. And there's been a couple times where I've come really close, but there's been like small little problems, like the conditions are perfect, but I'm not on an island for some reason or another. But I will do it, that's something I am going to do. and. Just for the Native American project, we used, we um, made a, we just made a uh, collage in Photoshop, and we we presented vocally, and on this one we are presenting to Dr. Turnbull, and yeah, we just did a whole bunch of different things, and we got good comments from. Uh, Dr. Turnbull, so I think we communicated it effectively. So I think I think I've shown uh, examples of that. And now that brings it back to the main points. What have I learned? I've learned the value of persistence in learning and exactly what is needed in order to succeed. Was I successful? I believe I was successful this in this part of the year. What challenged me? Challenged me, writing, all that stuff, that really challenged me. What do I need to improve? 
Yeah, writing and that. And where have I gone? What's more important is where will I go? Thank you. Any questions or comments? Like your video. Yeah, I like the video. Can we watch it again? Like, oh no, I'm not going to be enough. It's going to be your seven. Your face changed like twice at least. Wait, what time was it? Ten. Oh, seven. Ten, twelve. Yeah, go. Who is the person in the video that ate it? Yeah, was that you? Um, no, that was not me. Um. I have ate it like that a couple times. I just didn't have um, videos of it, so I just took a does video that, off somewhere else. Does that happen else. often? Um, good. about <laughs> once a month. Oof. Uh, Is there a when, when there's wi when winds Dude, heavy. Yeah, a metal happens. pole hitting me in the face. Oh, I got one of those. Yeah, it doesn't feel too good. I, I, one time. Get any uh, questions? Comments? It's pretty bad. Like that. Why'd you get me do the, the like, wrap things up for the one at the very end? Um, I just thought that um, it's good just to have a nice big overall, just quick summary. Jackson? I really like the innovation in this one and the effort that you put into making the videos and photoshopping it. It really felt like your own presentation. So it was good. You should put the you should put the music at the end, like right when you finish your session. <laughs> That'd be good. Kelly. Oh, I liked how you used a story about yourself. Kind of it, kind of like showed that you kind of knew more about how it, like, like uh. Yeah, easy, to, easy to connect to, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. I like how you use like one of your hobbies or something you like doing to apply it to your learning and how how that kind of connects. I wasn't clear, like, how how was communication connecting to your example of your sailing? Um, well, just like I communicate in multiple mediums, I also, um... Because the example was you wanted, you really want to do that race, right? With different um, boats. The crossing in in multiple boats. Different ways. Ah, I see. Different yeah. ways. I see, okay. okay. So you're doing the same thing, but in different yeah. ways. I get it. Henry? Huh? You had a question? No? Um, like, did you answer how was I successful? You kind of just said, was I successful, you know? Like, how? Yeah. yeah. But you did it good. I like yours. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, can you play the